Joe PC, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. It's good to be here with you, KJ. Hey, man, you too, you too. Hey, you want to go ahead and tell everybody just a little bit of something about you as far as how long you've been in ministry? Sure. I uh, grew up here in Northeast Ohio, and so long-time resident. Uh, been in ministry 30 years. Started here in 1990, uh, came to Grace in uh, 1978, and just enjoyed doing ministry here all these years. Man, 30 years. Yes, sir. That's a long time. Yeah. Hey, man, we, we just want to have a, continue to have this conversation. I think it's a good one about sharing your faith, oh. um, so especially coming from a boomer to a millennial. Um, and just kind of asking some tough questions, but at the same time mm-hmm. trying to figure out like, hey, how can you pass the mantle on to the next generation? Mm-hmm. My first question is, is what does sharing your faith look like? Like, what does that mean to you? Sharing your faith is, is pretty simple. I think it's just one person telling another person about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, it it mm-hmm. certainly would include uh, how is one saved and but, but it's so much more than that. I think it's really knowing God. Uh, it said this is eternal life that you might know him, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, just communicating to people all the riches, all the things that we have in being a relationship with Christ. Hmm. Man, you've boxed that up beautifully, but... It can't be that simple. Like so, when I'm what I mean by that is is like so. Looking at it from a millennial standpoint, when I think of sharing your faith, normally you see the picture of the person who's on the soapbox mm-hmm. and yelling out everybody, "Hey, repent or go to or go to hell," mm-hmm. you know, and or you've got like heaven's gates or hell's flames. And is it that is is sharing your faith? Is that the picture of it, or is it more to that? Would you say? Yeah, I think we make it way more scary than it is. I think it's mm. pretty simple down in the nuts and bolts of it. It's just one person sharing with another person uh, what they have found in the relationship with God and, and how do you really begin that. And uh, I remember one day my uh, six-year-old daughter was sharing the, uh, the hope that she had in the, the good news of Christ and how to be saved with a five-year-old friend. And if my six-year-old daughter can do it, it can't be all that tough, you know. And yeah. She did it beautifully. And so, yeah, I, th- I think we, uh, I, we get a little bit worked up about it and it's just pretty natural and simple. Just like you and I sitting here talking with each other and saying, hey, KJ, this is, this is mm. what I've, I've been experiencing in my walk with God and just mm. having a discussion about it. Man, that is really simple when you say that a six-year-old is sharing to a, a five-year-old. But as humans, we make it real complex the older we get. Yeah. Man, what if I'm scared? Uh, what if I'm somebody who is not an extrovert? Um, I don't want to go up and <laughs> talk to people. I don't want to you know, bother, you know, bother people in that sense. Were you always this bold when it comes to this topic? Yeah, not at all. I was a super shy kid growing up, and so mm. uh, I would never imagine myself doing that. But everybody has their circle of influence and friends, and uh, I, I was comfortable operating in my, my circle of friends. And mm. uh, just being able to talk naturally with, with uh, what I was feeling and experiencing, uh, I think God strategically placed me in that little network. And as you get to do it more and more, mm. you get more confident, and, and I think you get a little bit more bold to say, I want to ask those questions. I love telling the illustration that if... Uh, if Walmart, we were talking about before, offered this incredible deal on free television sets for every pastor that comes in this week only, okay, I would think, oh, come on, really? I don't, <laughs> I don't think. I, uh, but sure enough, I get up my courage and I go, I'm going to check it out. So I yeah. stop in there and I show him my pastor card and it goes, yep, this week you're getting a free 65-inch television set. And so nice. they bring it out and I'm watching the football. This is amazing. Yeah. And I didn't tell any of my other small circle of friends about this incredible deal, any of my other pastors on staff. You know mm. what they'd think about me? they go, Carrick, how selfish are you? You couldn't even just mention yeah, the, this yeah, incredible yeah, deal? And yeah. I, that's how I sort of see evangelism, is we have these incredible benefits of eternal life and, mm. and hope in Christ and peace and joy and all those other things, and we don't want to sit on that information. So as I just begin even sharing in my network of people, I think I get more confident of like, oh, I know how to explain this to people. It's not that hard. Just from a Christian perspective, we can at times feel like we're 
trying to learn the information, gathering the people, and then delivering. Whereas it's just, hey, we just learn about the Lord, fall in love with him, but he gathers the people. And a lot of times they're right around you. You're just not even... Well said. Okay. And, and, yeah, and I think it takes just a little bit of work. It might take 20 minutes, you know, take a, a steps to peace with God and just sort of learn the basic steps. Yeah. If you want to introduce somebody how to come into saving knowledge of Christ and, mm -hmm. and, and become part of God's family, but it, it, it's really not that hard. Coming from a millennial background, we might be more reserved and saying, hey, I would rather cultivate the relationship and build it that way. Is that not good enough? Like, is it not good enough for my example to just show, like? I'm not sure millennials and boomers are all that different. A lot of millennials I know have a lot of great opinions and not afraid mm -hmm. to express themselves. But I think the question is, is do I need to wrap words around how somebody comes into relationship with God? And I think you need to do that. You know, it's not mm -hmm. enough just to model a, a moral yeah. lifestyle or integrity or, or uh, mm -hmm. concern for people. People might wonder like, huh, why is he like that? And they're mm -hmm. not really have enough information to connect the dots to say, it's the spirit of Christ in that person, you know, or, mm -hmm. or, or that relationship with God. So he, he does want us to model it, but he also wants us to use words and to really explain, uh, you know, how you get there. If you ask me for directions, how do you get to Berea? <laughs> And I just say, well, I'll just model a good life. You know, that doesn't help you get to Berea. Yeah. You know, you, you, you need to go, well, take two streets and then the left and, you know, mm -hmm. and you're there. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's good that you said that because I think naturally come from, from our standpoint, um, it can be just like, well, this is the way I'm wired. I'm geared to do it. So forget about what you guys have to do because we've seen maybe people turn away because of that. Yeah. But instead realizing it, it makes sense like, hey, you know, you need to have that bowl on top of the gift to give it, to make it appeal and make it worthy, you know. Yeah. Use a, your own style to do it, but you do got to use words to explain like, hey, there, there is that choice and, and there's steps huh. you can make to really move towards Christ and here's how you do it. I'm Bethany, and at Grace Church, we're all about equipping the local church to love Jesus, grow with others, and serve the world around them. Want to go deeper into this topic? We've got a free bundle of resources for you. The free download includes two videos that show what it might look like to apply what you're learning in real conversations, plus a printable PDF workbook for you to study the biblical topic of evangelism further. If you're a church leader, these three tools can help you engage with your congregation on this topic, but you don't need to be on staff at a church to get access to these free resources. It's for anyone. Just click the link in the description, fill out a quick form, and the download will be sent directly to your inbox. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to get instant updates when our next videos are posted, be sure to hit that red subscribe button.